What's good family? Welcome back to the channel. In this video right here, we have they mocked God on live TV. Then this happened. Sinful man is at war with God. Bless God and bless the gays. <laughs> so all I can say is suck it, Jesus. This award is my God now. And if you don't believe this, you are incredibly naive. To all those who feel different, if you're a part of a group that's called other, a group that does not get the chance to be center stage, build your own stage and make them see you. Your queerness is beautiful. I don't care about your religion. I'm so tired of having nonstop conversations about what the Bible says. If you think that sinful man can just coexist with God. No, that wasn't me. I was in Africa then giving AIDS to babies. He does everything. If you think that that sinful man can just wink and nod and and watch God's people go and do and be who they are and proclaim the gospel and win and gain ground and be okay with it. Jesus, doesn't the Bible say these people are an abomination? Yeah, but you know, it says the exact same thing about this shrimp cocktail. You are sorely mistaken. Oh my God. It doesn't say the same thing about the shrimp cocktail. Jesus said that foods are fine to eat. It just goes into your body and out through your butt. It's like a child looking up defiantly and saying, you're not the boss of me. But he did make a statement. He said it's like a child that is telling their parent that they're the boss. And when thinking about it, it just hit me right now. Like, you know, our parents give birth to us in a more fleshly manner to our physical body. But now we have to understand we have a spirit. Who Who is the giver of our spirit? Where did our spirit come from? From God. And that's why he's our father. It just hit me right now. And that's why the same way you would want to, you know, give your give respect to your earthly physical father is the same way you would want to give respect to your spiritual father. Well, I mean, the real truth is those people are idiots. But those people die off like dinosaurs. And so, you know, I think the, the goal is to pay them no mind, march forward and, and, and embrace the growth that makes us human. There is a sense in which the whole world, and yes, it is the whole world, the whole world outside of this people of God is at war with God. The Knesset bill would strengthen an existing law that makes it a crime to give anything of value to persuade anyone to change their religion and proselytizing to anyone under 18 years of age. The proposed law states anyone who persuades a person directly, digitally, by direct mail or online to convert his religion, his sentence is one year imprisonment. If you know, I know I'm like kind of late on it. And if the person was a minor, his sentence is two years imprisonment. There's a picture of the peoples of the world assembling against God, amassing their armies, if you will, against God, preparing all the firepower they have to go to war against God and actually believing that if enough of them amass that they can stamp him out. Well, earlier this month, she was praying silently outside an abortion clinic in Birmingham. She wasn't yelling or carrying a sign or blocking the doorway or doing anything disruptive. She was just praying, not to the government, to God. And that's not allowed anymore. So police approached her and arrested her and charged her with violating a public space protection order and committing, quote, antisocial behavior. And we're not making this what? up. It was caught on video. In this case, however, warfare, yeah. the armies are finite men coming to fight against God himself. This is a fool's errand because it's not possible to win. Their armies have no chance. Nevertheless, they amass for war. We see it all the time, don't we? Sometimes I, I look at people's lives and I watch them war with God. I'm trying really hard to maintain a relationship with God. And I don't think that he made a mistake with me. Um, and that maybe one day I will actually be grateful for being trans. That this isn't some curse, but it's just a different path 
to the same destination. And you just want to look at him and say, stay down, man. There is today an all-out attack upon God in the Bible because sinful people hate both God's moral law and the necessity of bowing down and submitting to Jesus Christ for their salvation. Unfortunately for them, however, their war against God is absolutely hopeless and insane. Why does Literally. this man insist on warring with God? As crazy as that sounds. Thank you to uh, Satan for giving me inspiration on how to play this role. Even though their war against God is completely hopeless, they can't help but wage war against God because the truth is that all of us are born with a sinful nature that rebels against God and his commands. We are all born with inherent pride, selfishness, and evil. It's kind of like the classic yeah. story about the frog and the scorpion. Y'all know that story. Scorpion's trying to get across the river and he needs some help. He talks to the frog and says, man, why don't you give me a ride? The frog says, I'm not going to do that. You'll sting me and kill us both. Said, no, I won't do that. I got to get to the other side. Just give my brother a ride. I promise. Halfway across, the frog feels the sting in his back. And before he succumbs and sinks, he looks up to the scorpion and says, but why? To which the scorpion responds, it's just my nature. That's fallen man. It's just mm. his nature to be at war with God. And it will always be his nature uh, uh, until the bitter end. Unless God comes in mm. and changes our hearts, we will do everything we can to fight against both God and God's people, who are God's ambassadors in this world. That ultimately, in this war, it is a war against God. It is a war against Christ. And it is a war against the body of Christ. However, no matter how hard the world fights against God, Psalm chapter 2 tells us that God's response is to laugh at the world's pathetic attempt to rebel against him. He who sits in the heavens laughs. The Lord holds them in derision. Then he will speak to them in his wrath and terrify them in his fury, saying, Now, please, please don't miss this. Like, like imagine, imagine trying to fight against, rebel against the creator of the heavens and the earth and the universe and you. That's like, when it comes to God, all I could possibly say is sorry and I love you. You know what I'm saying? Like, how, you can't, how are you going to try to fight him? Okay, we start with the Lord laughing. Which again is pretty terrifying. I bring my armies and I'm ready to go to war. I've got a huge army amassed and I'm ready to go to war. You ready to fight? Why are you laughing? God laughs because he knows he has already won the victory through sending his son, Jesus Christ, into the world. But it's incredibly shocking just how God wins the battle through Jesus Christ. What's the terrifying thing that God says to sinful man in his wrath? He says, I've set my king on Zion, my holy hill. There it is. That's the terrifying thing. We bring massive armies. We bring everything that man can think or imagine or invent to bring. And we come to fight with God. That God made me smart enough to know that if there are alternatives out there that can work for me, I will investigate them. But I also know God said, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. I will not make that decision for anybody. Again, God has absolutely no fear of fallen humans because of Jesus, whom God has made king over all creation. And he laughs and says... Kings and Zion. And that's it. And it's terrifying. God is not threatened by the armies of men. He laughs at them. Every rebel against God will ultimately either obey God willingly or unwillingly. The enemies of God simply cannot win their war against him. Psalm 37, 13, but the Lord laughs at the wicked for he sees that his day is coming. Psalm 59, 8, 
but you, O Lord, laugh at them. You hold all the nations. You know, sometimes I just wonder, it's like, man, like, how did we get to the point where we're over here watching, like, sermons on this channel? It's kind of crazy. In derision, all of them were rebelling against God. It's folly because men will ultimately obey God either willingly or unwillingly. There is no winning this war, which is why God laughs mm. and holds them in derision. God is not threatened by sinful men. But well, the shocking part facts, of the war yeah. between God and fallen humans is just how God has chosen to win the war. God wins not with weapons or through military might, but through suffering and the cross. But the way that the king on Zion wins the war as ironic as the idea of God laughing and holding them in derision. Colossians 2, 13 to 15. And you who were dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made alive together with him, having forgiven us all our trespasses by canceling the record of debt that stood against us with its legal demands. This he set aside, nailing it to the cross, he disarmed the rulers and authorities and put them to open shame by triumphing over them in him. It is the cross. That's how the king wins this battle on Zion. It is through the cross. And unless our hearts are changed by God and the Holy Spirit, God's plans for victory simply makes absolutely no sense at all. It makes no sense. We come to you to go to war with you and you win the war with us by your king dying on your hill? That's exactly right. What's incredible is that those who go to war against God are going to war with the very God who has made a way of salvation for them. The very God who is their only hope of escape from judgment. As I said, it's a fool's error. Wow going to war with God. Not only is it a fool's errand because you cannot defeat God, but it's a fool's errand because here you are going to war with the one who is actually your only hope. This makes the war against God all the more foolish and wow. insane. But this also demonstrates just how depraved we are in our sin apart from God's work in our lives and hearts. Where does one That's so run? true. You, you see people all the time, like, literally, like, they have, like, a hatred for Jesus. When he's the one living person that loved everyone unconditionally, died on the cross for everyone as a sacrifice for our sins. And it's, like, people, <laughs> there's so many people that don't like him when that's their only hope. Run and hide from God. It's not only foolish because you can't hide from God, but it's foolish because at that moment after you've eaten, you have one hope and one hope only, and that is that God would be merciful to you. So you're actually running and hiding from the only one who can save you. As Christians, our answer to the world's war against God is not to fight back in the same way but simply to proclaim Jesus Christ and the gospel, which is the most powerful weapon of all. And as Christians, we have complete confidence that God has already won 100%. and will certainly win this war against fallen humanity. Jesus' defeat of sin and death was a decisive triumph over all the forces of evil that are arrayed against God. The, the, the reason that God smiles and holds them in derision is because the outcome was never in doubt. It's not the church militant and hopefully triumphant. Amen? It's not the church militant and Lord willing triumphant. No, we will triumph. Ultimately, this war against God is all about Jesus and which of the enemies of God will be snatched out of their kingdom of darkness into God's kingdom of glorious light. Psalm 2 is about Jesus. It finds its ultimate fulfillment, fulfillment in the person and work of Christ. Jesus presented himself as the Messiah. 
the son of God. The nations are his birthright. They are his inheritance. And we are the means through which he claims this inheritance. As we preach the gospel and men are saved. Again, let's go back to the picture of Psalm 2. It's facts, yeah. And I like, I like the point that he had mentioned uh, within the video on how he said that we're all born into a sinful nature. And that's just what it is. And that's why we need Jesus. That's the hope. That's just our hope for a better humanity. Yeah. But I hope you guys did enjoy this video. We're able to see how people rebel against God, how they mock God on live TV, especially with the celebrities literally thinking Satan as his God, which is should be very eye-opening on the evil forces in this world. You feel what I'm saying? I hope you guys did enjoy this video. Make sure you do smash the like button, subscribe, turn on post notifications. I'm going to catch you guys in the next one the same way you're going to catch me in the next one. Peace. Love y'all.